God bless you and welcome to Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast. We appreciate and welcome all of you, our listeners around the world. Stay tuned to hear an exciting word from pastor teacher, Dr. James Sutton. out of Joshua. I've learned so much. And the thing about it is, if you would have stayed with us, mm-hmm. I guaranteed you would have understood. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's just for him. I mean, for those who you gotta take a little bit at a time. I keep trying to tell y'all that. How you eat an elephant one bite at a time. The Bible is an elephant. But God can give us the Bible so that we have no understanding. He'd be, a, he'd be a capricious, cruel guy to give us a book and he didn't want us to understand it. Right. Ain't no mysteries in this book. The mystery is in your mind and your imagination. Because you don't want to be obedient, D. They don't want to be obedient to what this book says. Right. Oh, I can't understand it. Understand. Thou shalt not steal. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> Thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm-mm, I'm feeling too good. Okay. This is the standard by which we live and breathe. I don't need the need of. I need a word from God, not some kind of cloudy thing mixed up with my emotions. Okay? We spend too much time in the churches of today, not this church, not universal, but a lot of churches practice witchcraft and they don't even know it. They're doing too much. They always try to have a relationship with God outside his word. And that's the problem with the Israelites. I've learned that in Joshua. They always try to do something outside of what God said. 700 years after Joshua and the failing of a perfect system and blessing, we here come Jeremiah. Mm. Same problem. We just read it in Jeremiah chapter 5. But somehow or another, through this thing, God is in control. So let's look at Romans 9, 21 first. And it says, Jeremiah. No, I just said. I, I didn't change. I said, let's look at that first. We're going to be in Jeremiah. I want you to stay in Jeremiah. Just listen to what I'm about to say in Romans. And if you want to go there, you can go there. Okay? It says, Has the potter not the right over the clay to make out of it whatever he chooses? One lump out of one vessel. One for honor, one for dishonor. It is up to the potter to determine what he wants the clay to be. So you think about this. It's up to the potter. The potter is the God. The potter is God. And then in verse 2 it says, the clay asks the potter, why hast thou made me this? We're always looking at the other person trying to figure out what God is doing in their life versus appreciating what God is doing in our own. Mm-hmm. Sure, right, I'm sitting over here th- like a pot over here and I got my eyes over there. But God is fashioning me right here. And in, the, in that dialogue, he says, I even rose up Pharaoh for my honor. So I rose up evil. I made a pot out of evil. I made a pot to, to do evil things to my people because even that gives me honor. And where there's more evil, there's more grace. And I get the glory. See, if there was no evil, there would tend to be no, no need for grace because that means we would be living right and doing right. But we can't do right. So evil has to trump our sins. He has to come something harder. So we sit and play politics. And you think you was born better under this person versus that person. My question to you is, isn't the world worse no matter who we've gotten? Do you really think it's based on the president of the United States when he's a civil leader? He is not a moral compass. And quit voting based upon him being a moral person. None of them were moral. None of them were prophets of God. None of them, but they were used by God. Because he's their vessel. And he chooses how to use them. Quit looking at them to set a standard for you when you got the word of God in front of you. That's it. My Lord. First and here. Don't vote black. Vote Biden. Is anybody perfect in this room? No. And I'm not advocating you to vote for anyone that you don't want to vote for. But this is the thing. Quit relying on them and rely on 
Jesus because you say a miss, you say that you trust God. We read in Jeremiah, you're saying, Oh, I trust God, but then again, you put all your trust in man. How they vote, what they do. Don't you know everything is to fashion us to bring us to God? The evil that's done supposedly to us is to break us to bring us to God. Again, we got too many times we're trying to get out of captivity. Look for the exit when the blessing is in the captivity. In Joshua, I've learned that there will be people that will die under the oppression of captivity because we can't handle being free. The more freedom we have, the worse we act. So that's why some church people say you can lose your salvation because what they see is when people live under grace, they get worse. When people live under grace, they get worse. When people live under the freedom of God, they need the law. But the law tells us in Romans that the law points out the fact that we're sinners. But thank God that where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Yes. So let's read a, a favorite passage that Christians read and I'm going to debunk right now that I want you to fully understand this. Go ahead, read 2911, start. So this is the potter. He's about, to, he's about to declare something. Just think about the clay. Now think about potter and the clay. It's a wheel. It spins. Potter puts his hands on the clay as it spins to control how it's being built. If he removes his hand, it goes everywhere. This is the time in Israel where he has removed his hand, but if he wants us to remind him, he's willing to put his hand back on the wheel. Read. <clears throat> For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Thank you. Praise God. See, right now, in this time, in Jeremiah's time, Israel is about to go into captivity. Jerusalem has been sacked. And think about this. Nebuchadnezzar is the one from the east, from the west, the east that's going to take care of Jerusalem. And even Nebuchadnezzar being the evil person that he is. He's going to be stronger than, than the sin of the Israelites. He says, I'm going to send somebody that you can't handle. I'm going to send a lion. I'm going to send somebody with cattle. I'm going to send somebody with an iron hand to chastise you. And you're not going to know where he came from. You're not going to even speak his language. He's going to come like a locust. He's going to come like a plague. He's going to come strong. And he's giving the people a chance. He's saying, look, I'm in the earlier chapter, he said, go warn the people. So that's where we get in chapter 5, where we read. He's willing to go warn the people. He said, if I could find one just man, does that sound like something that happened before? If I could find just one just man to repent, I will save the whole nation. But he couldn't even find one, Jeremiah included. Because you would think if he would just find one, Jeremiah could have should have been the one, right? But see, the thing about it is with God, the prophet doesn't escape what the people go through. Even though God is using him, he's not more holier than they are. He's just part of the lump. See, he's just part of the lump of clay that we've all are born from. See, we are all lumps of clay and we're in the potter's hand. And now this potter that's fashioning us has now decided that we go into captivity. And while we're in captivity, he's going to tell us he's going to prosper us. But we think he means prosper us out of the captivity. What he's trying to tell them is, even though I put you in captivity, your prosperity can continue in captivity until I'm ready for you to come out. See, the day that you're coming out is not your obedience. Your day of coming out is when he's ready. So your prosperity in captivity is based upon your obedience. See, you think obedience gets you out. At some point it does. But it doesn't necessarily get you out. If you've been praising him while you're in captivity, why not leave you in captivity? If you're going to seek his face while you're in captivity, 
Why would he let you out to go seek out other gods? So there's a blessing in captivity. He's going to tell them in the later chapters, I want you to have children. I want you to multiply. I want you to do well while you're in captivity. You're going to be in captivity for 70 years, which means there were some people that will start as a child in captivity and will die there. But they can be blessed because he says, while I have Nebuchadnezzar doing what I need him to do to prepare you to get out, you need to continue to look for me while you're in. So what is captivity for you? Captivity means the ebbs and flows of life. Captivity is, is your mindset. Captivity for you is when you decide to go into law versus grace. Captivity to you is that situation you're in right now this minute. And God's trying to leave the heat on you so you can search for him. God's on you on the potter's wheel and God is molding you and, and, and picking off of you and molding you. And he's molding somebody for to do some things they're supposed to be doing, but they're going to be his agent to bring about the, the, the chastisement of the children who love him. And he says they keep getting out of order. So I got to make something that's going to whoop on them. I got to make somebody that's going to whoop on them. I got to make somebody who they despise to get them to run back to me. That that person is going to be worse than their sin. That that person is going to be worse than their adultery. That person is going to be worse than their thievery. That person is going to be worse. And I got to form and fashion him. And then I got to take this person and harden them in the fire. And you're looking at that person. That's meant for God's glory to be evil. And you have nerve to actually look at them and say you want to be like Mike. <laughs> Because you're looking at the wealth. See, he said he had fashioned Nebuchadnezzar. Can you imagine how Nebuchadnezzar was fashioned by God in the Far East to be this strong, that he could conquer this tribe of Israel? Israel had become a nation full of warriors. But they also became a nation full of sinners. Because they did not do what God told them to do. I mean, as you might find this interesting, now we're in Jeremiah. Guess the group that came back. To lie to them and told them it was going to be okay when Nebuchadnezzar, uh, with the, in the cat, Nebuchadnezzar was going to come again. I'll give you tonight. <laughs> now we know how that works. Yeah. See, if you come to Bible study, you uh, you can appreciate that. If you don't come to Bible study, y'all sitting there going, huh? Give me a nice video. But we, but we covered how they move. They lied to the Israelites so they wouldn't be destroyed because God had told them to destroy everybody. So what they did is pretend like they were from a far country and came in under, under skies and, and Israelites made an oath to them and said they would destroy them. And guess what? Their people of God, when they say what they say under God, that's done. They deserve to be destroyed, but they figured out a way to get in by lying. And then 700 years later, that same group of liars, one prophet, false prophet is raised up during the time where Jeremiah told him you're going to go in captivity for 70 years. Here comes the false prophet that y'all listen to on TV in. Everything going to be all right. The Lord want to bless you. You're going to come out of the captivity in two years. Now, why would God put you in captivity and you've been sinning for 700 for only two years? He shortened it by giving you 70. But there's always going to be a false prophet that come along to tickle your itching ears and tell you what you want to hear. You're coming out. What if God said you got to stay in? Most of us have to stay in. You know how I know? Because Paul. Paul said I was plagued with this thing for Satan said this thing to at me for a long time. And I prayed for God three times. To remove this thorn in my flesh. But you know what God told me? His grace, his mercy is sufficient. What? what? God, I want to get out of this captivity. What do you mean your grace is sufficient? Because in your weakness, I'm strong. In your captivity, you search for me. In your downtrodden times, you lift your holy hands. See, the thing about it is, the Bible says when men lift their holy hands. There's not enough men lifting their holy hands. We got too much pride. But yet still when we need something from God, we'll turn to our lady and say, you lift your holy hands because I'm going to ride on your coattails. Because you're going to go in there and get deep with the Lord. While I just swim in the shallows. 
and feed off of what you have. But just think about if it was reversed. That the man was the one leading the woman to Christ. The man was the one who was leading his family to the Lord. The man was the one who was moving forward in the Lord. All she got to do is fall back into the position God gave her. Man, you keep raising your hand. When your hand get tired, I'm going to come along and raise your hand. Because my blessings come from you doing what you're supposed to do. But when you don't, I got you. I can become Deborah. But there's a glory that you won't have because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. See, the thing about it is we're in captivity. All of us got different captivities that we're in. And what I'm showing, what God is showing me through his word is that, is that this thing with blessing is, it's a mighty thing, an awesome thing to get blessed by God, but it's an even harder thing to stay blessed in that sense of freedom. Okay. We're free. Yeah. And not only are we free, it says who the Lord has set free is free indeed. But yet and still we operate better under captivity. We love each other better under captivity. We, we deal with each other better when we gossiping. We just can't be a happy family. And of course, I'm not speaking to walk the truth in, 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 in any kind of way, but we know this goes around the world. We have to learn how to live with inside the captivity so that when God decides to get us out, we can be refreshed. He's going to prosper us. He's going to rebuild. He's going to build up. His hand is still on the wheel, but his hand is on the wheel even though you're in captivity. You don't feel him. You may not feel so victorious. We go from victory to battle, but we know we win in the end because he's that potter and he has his hands on the wheel. God does have a plan for you, but he can prosper you in your captivity. And your captivity is not your mess. There's a difference. Your mess got you in captivity. And then your, so in other words, while you're being chastised, God is blessing you. What we went through this morning was a blessing. That correction was a blessing. That was at the point of our captivity, right? And it blessed my soul to hear those talk about where you were at. It's kind of funny. Everything worked together for the good for those who love God. Well, everything everybody said worked together. If you just can see it spiritually. God does want to bless you. God does want to prosper you. But you can't get out one second, one day, one second, one hour before God wants you out. So I suggest to you, and I'm bringing this to the end, because it's not what I want to preach, but the Lord led me in a different direction. Seek him while you're in this captivity moment. We're out of the wilderness. The wilderness was one form of captivity. The wilderness was a place, remember we talked about wilderness, a place you don't really know where you're going. But while we're in this captive moment, we know where we can go. But God said, seek me while you're here. This moment, while you're captivated, while you're caught up, while you're confused, while you're wondering what's going to happen next. Seek me now. Don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself. You can't be God given. So while you're in captivity, just keep on giving. Because the day he wants you out, guess what? You have something to spend when you get out. So pray for your family members. Pray for your friends. And remind them, quit looking for the exit door. Sometimes God wants to deal with you right where you're at. In the, in the midst of your captivity. Your mess got you in and the Messiah will get you out. But it will be in his time. God is on time God. And sometimes when the potter puts the clay into the furnace, it explodes. But our potter is a sure potter. Our potter knows as much heat to apply to you so you won't explode. And it will harden you and make you useful for his sake. And Pharaoh got hardened and Pharaoh began to harden himself and he became useful for God. Mm. Pharaoh turned down God at least 10 times yeah. to let his people go. Amen. But it was for their benefit that he did. It was for their benefit that he did. So once they got let go, if Pharaoh did it the first time, wouldn't have been no glory for God. Right. Well, Pharaoh could have said, nope, nope, nope. And then when Pharaoh let him go, he said, give chase. <laughs> and then he put him up on an immovable natural obstacle, some water. Mm -hmm. They wondered how we going to make it. We going to die that he going to kill us. Here they come. Mm -hmm. The Bible says they crossed over on faith. Oh, dry land. Yeah. But y'all missed this point. 
They didn't cross over on their faith. They crossed over on Moses' faith. That's the Bible say. The Bible say they crossed over on Moses' faith. So many people can be blessed by you for you having the faith while you're in captivity. And then Moses taught Joshua and Caleb. And they caught the heart of the man who helped them cross over by faith. And this is what I'm going to leave last. When we cross over by faith out of our captivity, there are some people that we got to cross out on this side when we cross over on the other side. And there's some attitudes we got to leave over here. And we can't take them over there. You can't take them into the promised land. Because the promised land is full of milk and honey. Not sour grapes. All right. Let's pray. Oh, grace, Heavenly Father, I just thank you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your rod of correction through your word. Lord, I thank you for the testimonies that you will prosper us and that you've blessed us, oh, Father God. Let us seek to be obedient and let us reread Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 6 or 7. Lord, that we may understand that we don't want to be a stiff-necked people. In our prosperity, we don't want to miss what you're trying to say to us. Lord, we want to focus on you and be good and kind to each other. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.